Welcome everyone for another exciting workshop. Uh, my name is Emilio Lorenzo. I am the Director of Student Success um, here with various collaborators today for our NSU Hacks for Success. I'm going to let everyone uh, hosting the event introduce themselves. Then we have a wonderful panel of students who are willing to share their insights. Just had a great conversation about BuzzFeed and the great articles. And they are a life-size version of a BuzzFeed article because they have such rich ideas and insights to share with you today. Um, so I'll go first. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Courtney Stein. I am the Director of Tutoring and Testing here at Nova Southeastern University. I'm also the coordinator of the Razor's Edge Shark Teach program. I'm super excited to talk to you guys today. And please excuse my nasally voice. I'm just a little congested. You know, we're all going back to real life. And I have my first cold in about 18 months. So it's <laughs> kicking my butt, but I'm here rallying for you guys. So thanks so much for coming. Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Melissa Villalobos. I work in the Tutoring and Testing Center with Courtney. I've been here for about three and a half years and I serve as the Assistant Director of Tutoring and Supplemental Instruction. And I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. Usually the end of the day kind of drags on. So I'm glad that I have like this fun, you know, event and meeting at the end of the day where I just get to chat with all of you guys. Uh, this this workshop serving as a little bit of an espresso or cafecito <laughs> for everyone's afternoon, getting us uh, kick started uh, and revved up going into the fall. Um, speaking of the fall semester, we have a panel of students who are going to share some tips going into the fall semester. Uh, we're going to turn it over to them. Can you, each of you uh, introduce yourself, uh, first and last name, maybe your major, and a little bit about yourself? Paula, you can go first. Hey, um, I'm Paula Veras. I'm an engineering major. I'll be a senior in the fall. Uh, I'm doing a concentration in biomedical engineering and minors in math and management. And I also work as a supplemental instruction leader at the tutoring and testing center. Newly promoted to a senior supplemental instruction leader. Woo, we love a smart lady. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie. Sophie, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Sophie Schulke. I'm also a rising senior. Um, my major is chemistry with a minors in mathematics. I'm a part of the dual admission program for DO, and I am a tutor at the Tutoring and Testing Center. Awesome. Yay. Hi everyone, so I'm Cassandra Santos. I'm also a rising senior at NOVA, so I am a double major in elementary and special education. Um, and I'm in the Edge Shark Teach program and the Fischler Academy. And I was a academic success coach in the Tutoring and Testing Center, but I don't work there anymore. Um, so I'm so excited to help you guys out today. <laughs> Thank you all three of you for joining us. Um, and today really is a very casual type of workshop. It's no PowerPoints. We're all just sharing insights. Um, we do have some questions prepared for our panelists uh, in terms of giving us some tips for success. Um, and so myself, Courtney, Melissa, um, anything you guys want to ask, but um, I thought we'd kickstart. I know um, one of the first things I think a lot of students are wondering, especially incoming freshmen, um, what are some good tips to get ready for the first day of classes? What, what, what should you be doing between now and the beginning of the fall to get ready for first day of classes, the semester beginning, just kind of the overall fall semester? And we could open end it. Whoever wants to take it first and build off of that, you guys feel free. So are you asking if we have any questions? Oh, well, we can we can do that, too. We were kind of opening it to the panelists to kind of talk to you guys about like tips for the first day of class. But also, if you guys have questions for them, we would love if you feel like speaking up or if you want to throw something in the chat, whatever works for anybody as well. Yeah. I have one question. So the difference with is there a difference with work study and actually getting a job at NSU or whatever job you get is work study? and you get paid the 4,500 for whatever year. 
I'll, Amelia, do you want to answer? Yeah, that? I'll take that. I wasn't sure if uh, this, okay. um, but uh, that's a great question. So then we're, uh, my office right now has federal work study and um, non-federal work study, which is known as NSE. Um, so there are both positions available. So if you're not federal work study or you didn't receive federal work study, uh, there's plenty of on-campus jobs that are available to you that are known as NSE. And so if you go on job X, which is uh, you sign into shark link and then you'll see all of these little widgets, there's gonna be a green widget that says job X on it. And if you click on that, um, it'll show you all available jobs on campus. Um, there's going to be a button that says see all NSE jobs and see another one that's all federal work study FWS jobs. So you could search both of those. There's a wide variety. Um, many just got posted last week. Um, and they range from you know anywhere from $10 an hour to more. Um, and they work with your class schedule because many all of them are departments on campus. They know you're a student. So if you're in good academic standings, you've enrolled and one thing I didn't mention is if this is your first time, you know, logging into JobX, it's going to have you take a little workshop on Canvas. It's a little video and tutorial that you have to take and an assessment. And once you take that, you're going to be able to access, um, you know, all the jobs available on campus. Thank you. Guys, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Yeah. Again, we have the panel here. This is very casual. We want everyone to feel free as, as long as we're, you know, all being able to share insights. So, uh, Zolani, I think you had a question. Yeah, um, I just recently did the student employment workshop. So, um, um, I know that there are there is a difference between federal work study and NSE jobs. Um, but my question is, should I work for my first semester or should I wait? Because um, I know that it's going to be really hard to adjust. We're coming from being in school online to being back on campus and being person. So it could be a little different. Um, and I'm wondering, should I work for my first semester or for my second semester? Panelists, do we have ideas here or thoughts? So I actually got a job like halfway through my first semester um, as a freshman. It's really up to you, but I mean, if you've had a job in high school and you can kind of manage that, but definitely like I would go through the first couple of weeks of classes and kind of get a feel for like what college is like because things are very different um but yeah i would just give yourself a couple weeks to see how things go and then from there you can usually figure out how much extra time you have that you could fill with a job and things like that um i don't know if anyone else has any input but that's just my opinion <laughs> um i would also say it depends on the type of job you want to have because if it's more of a physical job, then you know um, you're gonna be more physically tired at the end of the day. So I would say also give it a couple of weeks, see how it is and see what type of job you would like to have. Um, Cause office jobs are obviously very different to more physical jobs or maybe uh, jobs that require more of like your mental energy. Mm -hmm. Cass, do you have something? Yeah, so uh, Sophie, I was actually a student who like had a high school job and started college working in that job since I lived nearby Nova and everything. So like, is it doable? Yes, but you just have to have like that rapport and like relationship with your manager to make sure like, is this like doable for you? Is it like worth it to keep going? Um, so I think it's definitely doable just like, but like Sophie and Saying, like definitely like work it out a little bit for a couple of weeks and see if like you can handle the like stress and like easing into college after everything being in online and things like that because it can be hard but you know it is doable but like not for everyone so like just see your schedule and like your organization and time management skills yeah, i think a common theme is don't overcommit too early on before you've gotten used to your college schedule mm -hmm. um, but i think everyone will attest there is a lot of benefits to having an on-campus job, you definitely feel more connected to the resources available. Um, NSU has so many things to kind of support you on campus. 
Um, and when you're working, you just start becoming more aware of all these things uh, from tutoring and testing to uh, CAPS to writing center. You just start realizing, wow, there's just so much to do on campus, mm -hmm. so much available to you. But again, your academics come first and you don't want to overcommit to a job that sounds great and you know pays well, but is it going to be hard for you to balance that with your schedule? Um, luckily, most on-campus jobs are very flexible. And um, if you're the type of person that doesn't like a lot of downtime, I know some students struggle when they have too much free time because then they end up procrastinating or not doing the things when they have that time free. And sometimes when you have a work schedule and your class schedule, you know, you your every day is very organized. You know, when you're studying, you know, you're, when you're going to the library, you end up taking your breaks more strategically. Um, and you're not tempted by Netflix or Facebook or Instagram so much when you're kind of all day on campus and you're going from school to work to the library. Um, just some kind of my initial thoughts for my own student employees. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the audience? And you can keep coming on, but I thought that was a great start to kind of uh, getting in gear for the fall semester is thinking about you know, is an on-campus job something that you should be considering? And NSE versus Ferta Works, these are very common things. Most students, you know, are, are still getting used to the lingo of it all. Uh, Cass, Sophie, Paula, any other thoughts in terms of um, outside of student employment, what are some other things that students should be doing to get ready for the fall semester and first day of classes? You know, right now we're kind of at the end of July, you know, we're, Pretty much, uh, we're a month away. I can't believe it. Um, what are I think some things? Have a that... question. Go ahead. Well, in this case, for women or men too, but um, how do you feel about sororities and fraternities as far as an incoming freshman? Hmm. I don't know if any of our panelists are part of sorority and fraternity life. I am not a part of a sorority or like fraternity or any Greek life, but um, it's definitely a good way to make connections. You'll meet a lot of people for sure. Um, it is a bit of a time commitment. Um, so that might be something you want to think about, but for sure it's a good way to meet people and things like that. And there's a lot of ways that you can explore, just like student employment, you don't have to overcommit early on. Um, you know, this whole week of um, recruitment week where you get to know the different fraternities, sororities, um, get to know about a Greek life. Um, and it's not something that after going through, maybe you don't want to commit then and you explore it down the road. But it is a great way to meet folks. I know in college, I, I joined a fraternity. Um, it's a lot of events. It is a lot of commitment, but you end up building a lot of relationships. You get very involved. And um, a lot of times you're meeting individuals that you know, might have similar majors to you or different majors, but right away you're kind of having a group of people that you can interact with. Zolani. I know our front desk assistant, Hope, rushed last year and she was a freshman and she really loved that experience because it gave her, you know, more of a community on campus when, you know, a lot of students were going to school remotely or it was harder to feel connected. And so she really appreciated that sense of community. And, you know, you get that sense of community in a remote school year and in a more traditional school year. So she, you know, she loved the experience. She's so excited about it. I know those so stories and fraternities practice? sometimes can send like a, a text to the whole group and are like, hey, who knows anyone that's taking bio two or uh, research on campus. And so you have them right there almost your own little network of people that have answers for you. Um, so Lani, you had a question? I saw your hand raised. Yeah, um, I was wondering, is it possible to make a club or group? Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm in races that's talent. So um, I'm a, I would like to sing. I'm, in, I'm also in races that's gold, um, shark gold. Um, so I was like wondering how I can make groups or how I can make a club because I'm interested in modeling and singing and making a band. 
and stuff like that, having photo shoots. So I'm just wondering how I would be able to make a club like that, um, that would go well on my downtime if I'm not working my first semester. Okay, I can answer that, I think. So um, there's a few options. You could join a group on campus. I know we have like acapella singing groups. We have a lot of like student orgs. Um, normally the first week or so of classes, there's a lot of events where you can get to know all the organizations and clubs that we have on campus. So uh, keep an eye out for that if you wanna see um, what's there and if you wanna join any of those. And if you don't, if you wanna um, create your own, we have something called the Interorganizational Council. Um, and it's basically the unit that looks over all organizations on campus. So there's like certain rules, I guess, that you need to follow if you wanted to create like a, an official student organization. Um, but I would encourage you to look into the Interorganizational Council, maybe talk to someone uh, on the board or maybe talk to someone from another club that uh, has created it uh, to see how they did it. But it's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. um, People create clubs all the time, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know a super cool event coming up. I, I believe it's the first Friday of classes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Shaka Palooza mm -hmm. is super fun. It's in the in case arena. So there's going to be every club, sorority, like fraternity who like this participate and you can go around and see their tables and like get flyers or sign up for their email emailing lists and things like that so it's really fun you get free stuff free food um free so t-shirts yeah it's really really fun and we didn't have one like last year it was online but I know my freshman year it was a lot of fun and I got to see a lot of different clubs and things so definitely go to that event if you if it's possible for you um and I believe the minimum to create a club is six or eight I can't remember but you have to have like that amount of people six um, to create mm -hmm. a club and like um, Paula was saying IOC which is the inner organizational council will help you with all of those like logistics and things like that super easy and very accessible to make a club on campus um what are the oh sorry no no, no please Alani, go um what are the opportunities like I know um like people from the outside coming in um giving people internships um for specific clubs like um okay so i'm gonna be very specific if i want to make a club about modeling and about taking photo shoots what is the chances that i could get um an actual model to help with my club and get um agencies to help recruit us or um get internships or jobs or um people to actually come check us out. Uh, I think I could take this one, uh, you know, my previous role, I oversaw all internships and jobs at the university. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an office known as the Center for Academic and Professional Success. Um, and so that's where your edge advisor, your career and academic advisor, they support you in your career goals, your four-year academic planning. But we have a whole other side for employer relations where we work with all different types of companies, modeling agencies, fashion companies, marketing, PR, really every uh, organization. And sometimes, most of the time, we're working with them to develop internships, jobs, volunteer, project-based opportunities. Uh, we post all of these opportunities on our database known as Handshake. So when you're in first year experience, you sign up for a lot of early immersions on Handshake, but Handshake is filled with events, jobs, internships, and not just locally. So it's not just the ones that Nova is developing. It's a nationwide job search. So let's say there's an internship in New York with a fashion company. Uh, you're able to see it as an NSU student. And um, most recently, there's a lot of internships that have told remotely. And so even though the agency might be located in New York, they might be looking for those that can work remotely. Um, at the same time, our uh, the, the CAPS office works uh, to reach out to companies for guest speakers or for collaborations with certain student groups. 
Um, but there's a variety of opportunities in each industry, whether you're uh, a pre-health student interested in becoming a doctor, uh, you're an art student trying to get you involved in uh, your art interest or getting involved in fashion if you're a marketing communications PR student uh, or whatever industry you're into, uh, there's an opportunity for you. And one thing is CAPS takes a very individualized approach to your career. So when you, let's say, apply to an agency, um, the employer relations team can directly reach out to the hiring managers and send your resume on your behalf. And so it's like that additional push like, hey, we have a great student. Here's some great things on why you should take a look at them. And we've attached their resume. So um, they host career fairs. They host info sessions. Um, and sometimes they do that in collaboration with student groups that align with that industry. Awesome. Um, so I guess I have a question for our panel. Um, so I know I actually went to and did my undergrad here at NSU. And I know before I started on my first day of classes, I was really worried about being able to find them. So I actually drove to campus. I was a commuter student too. So uh, driving to campus helped me realize like what my commute would be like, where I'm parking on campus. And then I found my classes because I don't know where the classroom buildings are or anything like that. So I know I did that to help me feel better about my first day of classes. So what are some things that you guys did to help you feel more confident going into your first week as a college student? I know for my first day, um, I made sure that I had like my schedule written out on a paper very old school but I also like screenshotted it like from my shark link and kept it on my phone so like I know all the room numbers like when I have a certain class because like I know it's very common to go to the wrong class on the wrong day and I did I walked around campus and realized myself on like how long it would take me to walk because I can be a slow walker and the dorm far away so like if you want to stop for Starbucks or something like you need to like put that time into it because there's like nothing worse than like showing up late and what's in your hand so like making sure you have enough time to like get some just eat it on the way throw it out inside um and like be there a couple minutes early to make sure that you're um on time and that's pretty much what I did I made sure like everything I needed like in my bag like some essentials and like outfits picked out and things like that just to ease like first day of class kind of thing um so those are some really important things that I did on my first day that's a hot tip. Like if you plan on getting coffee or Starbucks in particular, because we do have a Starbucks on campus before you make before you make the journey to class, budget for that time because that line is oftentimes a lot longer than you than you would hope it would be. Um, so just budget. We also have an Einstein's on campus, which is that line tends to move a little bit quicker, you know. So also keep that in mind for your coffee options. Um, the Einstein's is also located in the building you'll probably have most of your classes, so that's a plus. Um, the only thing I would add to what Cassandra was saying is um, I would have a copy of your syllabus, whether that's like online, like have it loaded, because usually the first day of classes, they will go over the syllabus, like for sure. So definitely have a copy of that so you can like make notes and different things they say. Yeah, definitely pay attention to the syllabus. That one's important. Professors tend to not like when students ask questions that are like clearly stated on the syllabus, like right after they talk about it. Um, many of them will even uh, assign like syllabus quizzes. So definitely look over your syllabi, uh, make sure you understand them. Uh, if there's any questions that you have about them, make sure to ask because it's better to ask before you have a, a problem later on. Yeah. Um, also about what Melissa was saying, I did that too. I went, uh, I think it was like a day or two before classes started, I went and found the buildings um, and the classrooms with my roommates. So if you have roommates, if you uh, met some people before classes started, you might wanna you know, tell them, hey, do you wanna look where, to see where our classes are? It's very, it's very helpful. Um, and then about being ready for your first day. If you're a person that really likes to have like your materials ready, like um, like let's say you really like notebooks and pencils and stuff like that. Um, if you plan on 
you know, having those ready, I would say get them as soon as you can. Uh, because I'm an international student, so I couldn't really buy things in advance. So I just, I got to Florida. I went to the store to get my notebooks and my little pens and pretty things, and there was nothing. So <laughs> get those as soon as you can. Um, the outfit um, tip was also a really good one that Cassandra said. Um, it's really good to feel just like confident and you know, sure of yourself when you go to class. Oh, and the only other tip I have is maybe have ready three or four fun facts about yourself. Um, because especially in more conversation-based classes, like first year experience, uh, you'll get asked that pretty often. So have like three or four that you can use in different classes. Um, it's a pretty common question. Yeah, you know those icebreakers are coming where they're like tell us a fun fact about yourself have those locked and loaded so you're not you know trying to come up with them on the spot or two truths and a lie are very popular too yeah that's another one yeah, yeah. i was gonna yeah. say one more thing um have an umbrella on you it, like the weather is so unpredictable here so like always making add an umbrella or like something with me um that was or like a phone charger because you never know when you need because it could be a very long day of classes and you need your phone to like know what time it is and things like that so like just little things that you really need and also just like a sweater i know it seems counterintuitive because we're in florida and it's hot outside 99.999 percent of the time but inside classroom spaces it can get very chilly and courtney and i in our office just run extremely cold so we do recommend that you just carry like a sweater around with you guys you you will need it inside the classroom spaces Speaking within the classroom, and I think uh, Paula kind of hit on this with the syllabus uh, conversation. Um, and since all three of you on the panel said, you know, work to the tutoring and testing center, what would be some study tips? You know, I think one of the big transitions students face going from high school to college is realizing that the amount of time or approach to studying uh, may differ. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, some tips for success on studying strategies or? approaching your assignments that could lead to success in college? I can go first. Um, I know when I was an academic success coach, like this was something that my students like always and we need help with and like something I always told them was like, okay, well, you need help studying. Like what kind of learner are you? So like you free learn well visually like powerpoints and things like that maybe make a powerpoint of your notes to like help you study for that and like different strategies that you can use i know personally i study very well like in a group like i need people to hold me accountable and like make sure like i'm doing what i need to do and like most often than not like my friends and i are we're in the same classes so like you would just like help each other study like quiz each other and like that really helped us succeed so like if you have that close-knit group of friends that you end up finding together get a room in the library or like in any of our dorm buildings as like study rooms um and like have those people that help you be accountable and like study what you need to study for sure i would totally agree with that i like to study with other people as well um i would say like building off of that kind of like learn how you learn like um if you're a visual learner, if you're like verbal, you like to talk with people, things like that. Um, but that's, I would say like one of the biggest things because that will help you um, be most efficient in your studying and things like that. Um, also for me, I take all my notes, like I print out the professor's PowerPoint ahead of time and then I just take all my notes on there because sometimes they can go really quickly through their PowerPoints and you're not going to have time to write down everything. And it's just easier to go back and look what your notes were for that exact slide. Um, with that, I would say like try and keep your notes organized and like kind of all together in like one spot so that you're not having to go and look oh i have it in this notebook or this sheet of paper like being organized i would say is also super important for studying um some tips i have uh first of all get out of your dorm if you can um it really works for me to like keep 
where I sleep and where I have fun separated uh, from where I study. Everyone tells you that, but where you, when you literally live where you go to school, um, it gets harder. So I would say if you can uh, get out of your dorm to go study at like a study room or the library with friends, like they said, that's really good. It also keeps you accountable, as it was mentioned. Um, I would also say set times for breaks um, because the first part is, you know, figuring out how you study well, what's the best strategy for you. But then when we get into like the, the grind, as we call it, it's sometimes hard to get out of it and take a break. Um, so scheduling your breaks, you know, have food and water with you. I know I sometimes forget. Um, and it could be a disservice to you, you know, to not take breaks when you should. Um, and then I think my only other thing was like, it always works for me to look over like homeworks and practice questions when I'm studying, uh, because it gives you a pretty good idea of what your professor likes to ask. Um, but I guess it also has to do with, you know, being organized. I tend to keep like my notes, my homework, all of the practice questions uh, from the same class together so that I can look at all of it at the same time when I'm studying. Um, so those would be my tips. Sorry, I wanted to add like one more thing. So we're talking about like organizing our notes. I love to use Microsoft OneNote and you actually will all have like your Microsoft programs for free with your Nova email. So like I highly do just like downloading Microsoft Word on your laptop, Microsoft OneNote, PowerPoint, like Outlook for your email because saving like making folders for all of my classes and like putting pages in for all my, notes on my laptop helps so much to keep myself organized because it's really hard to keep um, track of handwritten notes. And when Paula was saying about giving yourself breaks, I love to follow the Pomodoro method where it's like after every 15 minutes you work, you get a five minute break and you can actually like download a Pomodoro timer, um, a Google Chrome extension. So like, that's really cool. So like, it's a very visual thing. It has a timer there, so that's awesome. So I love using that method. And I know there was a question. Yeah, there was a question in the chat. I saw that um, Isabella said, what's recommended when it comes to storage in the dorms? So I know a couple of you guys are on campus. So could you answer that? Um, so I actually just had like those, I put some bins under my bed. Um, you can buy them like at Target or Walmart. And then I just got like a bed sheet so that I put it over and you didn't have to see it or anything. Um, so that works pretty well. And then also they have like little storage caddies. Um, like my roommate had one, they're like three drawer, three, um, bins and then they have wheels so you can put like school supplies and different things in there but that's usually what um my roommate and i did for storage if anyone else has tips <laughs> oh did you have something i saw you unmute yourself i wasn't sure if you had something or was what sophie was gonna say you mean zolani or i I'll just ask my question. Um, so um, I know with the move in day, we only have a certain amount of time to go, you know, and move in. Any time after that, let's say if we have to stay, you know, because we have a lot of things, is there a fee? Because I know with another university like FIU, after every like hour that you stay longer to unpack your stuff on move in day, you have to pay, you know, money. Um, so as far as I understand, you have like your set time, but that's more for like the check-in. Um, so that would be like bringing all your documents if you need to, um, getting your keys, uh, seeing your RA, stuff like that. Uh, but then after that, I think you're allowed to be there with, I think two adult guests, I believe, until 9 p.m. Um, after nine, everyone should be out of the dorm except for you if you're staying. Um, but I, like, even if you do have them after nine, I don't think they charge you or anything, but yeah, um, I think you'd have enough time until 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. So long. 
Um, I'm trying to figure out procrastination is a biggie, I guess for me, I would say, how would you guys deal with procrastination? Cause I tried to devise a plan where I keep myself busy and I don't leave myself for too much leisure time because I know I'll get procrastin um I'll end up procrastinating. So how do you guys deal with procrastination? It's think uh, oh sorry, go ahead. Okay. So I think kind of what Paula said, um, I I really like to get out of my dorm, like go study in the library, like it will really help you because everyone else around you is also studying and you're in the library. So you feel like you should study um, and find yourself a group of friends that are also like committed to studying and like doing well in classes so that you guys can kind of hold yourself accountable like Cassandra said um, before. But yeah, that's how I definitely help myself with procrastination. <laughs> So I was gonna say that like how I help myself with procrastination, I don't know if this is a good way, but I like to reward myself. So like in motivation, like, okay, if I study for this long, I have this thing like a tree or whatever, or like be on my phone or something. And like, there's apps where you can use where it'll like lock your phone for a certain amount of time. And like, you get done what you need to get done. Um, mm -hmm. uh, intrinsic motivation, like, and also like, when you procrastinate like you have to know like it has to get done eventually so it's either gonna be now or later so you're like just save future you and just do it now like I think about that all the time like just save future you because you're like oh I'll just finish it in the morning no you're not you're not gonna wake up early you're gonna do it now so like that's how I help myself um, with procrastination like you just have to be real with yourself and it's like we're both not gonna do it tomorrow so we just gotta do it right now and like scheduling study breaks like into your calendar because like all that open space and time like it looks like free time but really you need to spend some studying so like oh you have work from like eight to three and then you think you're free after three o'clock but maybe like schedule in like two hours of studying like four to like six o'clock you have time to study and then after that you're free to do whatever you want to do so like making like that studying time of in your organization plan and like your life is like really important and like just dressing up when you go to study like I know when I go study or if I have exams and things like if you look good you feel good so like you know put on a nice dress or whatever makes you feel nice um and I feel like you just do better or like you'll be more inclined to like stay awake and like study and things like that instead of like being in your pajamas but it's also like whatever you're comfortable in you know I know I like to use my calendar. I'm sorry to cut you off, Paul. I'll let you go right after me. I like to use a calendar and I like to put my tasks on that calendar because then I'll get really upset at myself. If I don't do something before that time and date shows up. I love to make a to-do list too with everything I might need to do, no matter how big or small, because I still get like a huge sense of satisfaction just being able to cross something off of it. So, and also that's also something to keep in mind, like, you know, if you have to write a paper and you just think about like, man, I have to write this like six page paper tonight for my midterm, six pages sounds like a lot. But if you break that down into like, okay, like I need to write my thesis statement and then I have to write my intro. And if you break it down into more doable tasks, you'll feel like you're getting, you're chipping away at that larger task and it doesn't feel as daunting. Um, yeah, Paula, did you have stuff to add? Yeah, I was going to say something similar. Like, I agree with everything you guys have said. I definitely use calendars, set reminders. I also, like, have friends to study with. Because if you tell a friend, oh, we're going to go study at 3, even if you don't want to study, you're going to say, like, oh, I can't leave Maria hanging for three hours. I have to go. Um, the outfit thing, that's very true. I do that all the time. Um, I also use project management apps sometimes. So let's say I have like three projects for three different classes. Um, under each project, I'll have like a little to-do list that breaks down everything I have to do. Uh, and that makes it easier for me sometimes because it's like all out there for me. Um, but yeah, there's many different ways. I also, sometimes I also remind myself of a time when I did procrastinate more than I should have. And I remember like how I felt, uh, like how I cried for three days straight for, you know, not having my things done on time. And I, I just get like, okay, I can't 
be like that again. I can't feel like that again. Let me just do it now. I think something that is like a common theme of what everyone was sharing was also like finding what works for you. So I think that's like a huge part of being uh, in college is, is really like finding your own way. And you, you know, a lot of times when you're in high school, people tell you this is the way to do things. And there's just like one option, but there's not one option. Everyone learns differently. We study differently. And this is your time to like find what works for you. If you're a morning person, schedule time in the morning. If you hate the alarm clock going off, don't force yourself to wake up early in the morning because that's not going to work for you. You know, I tried to do that when I was a freshman, even though I wasn't a morning person, I had an 8 a.m. class and boy, was that a mistake. Like you're not going to be a different person just because you're at NSU. You're still the same you, you know? So if you, if you rather study at night, study at night, like be true to yourself, but really make sure you're doing it. Don't use it as an excuse either of like, oh, I can't study in the morning. I'm a night person, but then the night comes around and you're not studying then either. You know, like you have to be accountable to yourself, but you have the ability to do what feels right for you and what works for you. And you should try things out and, and, and really find yourself. That's like the most fun part of being here. Really good tips. Individual <laughs> journeys for all of us understanding our learning styles, our preferences, you know, Paula mentioned something about uh, reminding herself of the, those moments of anxiety. I'm curious from our panelists, like thinking back to your freshman year, um, if you can hop on a time machine and go back and give advice to yourself as a freshman, what would be advice that you'd give to yourself? Whether it's a heads up on certain experiences, dealing with stressors, um, <laughs> reminding yourself about anxiety from procrastination, what's some advice that you give to your freshman self? Okay, so I can go first. Um, I know for myself personally, like I'm a first generation college student. So like I'm the person on my whole college. So like the whole experience is very daunting and very scary. So I think tell freshman me or younger me was like, it's okay to ask for help or like ask and some things like that because especially um, being first generation, like you know, you ask for help. So um, I think I'd tell her like, definitely ask for help and it's okay to. Um, there's a lot of great resources, you know, at NSU, but it's also okay to, like, take care of yourself and, like, take the time and, like, be patient with yourself. So I think myself can do that. Yeah, going off of that, I would probably tell myself, don't worry, nobody really knows what they're doing. Um, because it's very common to feel like, like, am I the only one who's lost in space like what's going on but no like nobody really knows what they're doing at first for sure uh in classes walking around going to events like in general just like nobody really knows we all learn together um and also like you keep meeting people like left and right I would also tell myself it's okay to tell that person that you forgot their name they're probably meeting like 10 people a day too. <laughs> like just <laughs> can you remind me of your name please like you know um and just like I get out there more maybe like if you if you were like scared to go to an event but you had the time to do it like just go you know like what's the worst thing that can come out from it like a couple of friends like a new experience you know it's just um and lastly I actually changed my major my very first semester in college um so I would also tell myself like yeah that that that's not gonna be a bad decision don't worry about it like if you're really thinking about it and you talk it out with like your friends, your family, your academic advisor, very important. Don't go making crazy decisions. Um, if you really think you should, maybe yeah, it's a sign that it's gonna end up being a good idea. Yeah, for sure. Kind of saying what Paula said, but um, I also ended up changing my major and I ended up taking some classes like outside of my major because I thought I was gonna change to something like completely different. Um, so like, that's okay. Like, cause I came to college thinking that I wasn't gonna change my major. Like I knew what I wanted to do, but no, you should take the time to explore your classes and just what your interests are for sure. 
and definitely like try different clubs and different things, even if it's like something you never would have thought of. Um, but yeah, definitely get out there on campus. And then the other thing I would say is like, don't try and compare yourself to anyone else. Like we're all on our own path in college. Like it seems really different from high school because everyone's kind of, you're seeing the same people every day, going to the same classes. But in college, I think everyone is kind of on their own path. And like you have a lot of different mixes of ages and grade levels. So I would say definitely just like don't compare yourself. Like everyone's on their own thing. So multiple roads to our goals. And you guys mentioned advocating for yourself, um, making sure that you know you're speaking up, getting out of your comfort zone. Um, I think earlier when we talked about study groups, that's why it's so important. I know for me, when I was in college, just being around others that were taking similar classes to me, I'm like, oh, I'm not the only one completely stressed out about this biology test, or I'm not the only one that this doesn't make sense. And sometimes being around like-minded individuals, you guys can stress out together. And, and sometimes that can be helpful as well. Um, but I think getting out of your comfort zone, meeting new people, um, it just opens up your perspective. And then what you said is right. It's like, we all have our own journey. You don't have to compare yourself to others, um, but have others to be around you and share your ideas and express yourself. That's so important. And advocating for yourself, I think, whether that's going to faculty office hours, meeting with a tutor, talking to your advisor, don't hold these things in. You got to talk to people. These so resources and people are here for you, um, but you don't want to wait until it's you know, gone full blown and you're kind of overwhelmed. You want to have these discussions early on, whether it's changing your major, struggling with an exam, or some things in the classes aren't making sense. You know, your faculty, resources, tutors, advisors, everyone's here to kind of support you. And um, you want to make sure that you kind of speak up uh, when, when these things happen. Um, I have one more question. Um, so I know that there are going to be a lot, and I mean a lot of distractions in college. Um, so I know one major distraction is relationships. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how can I balance my college life and relationships? Because I know that my grandma said, relationships takes about half of your brain. I mean, I'm dating right now. So my relationships takes about half of my brain. I literally think about my, um, my partner like almost every day and throughout the entire day. So like I'm trying to figure out how can I balance my distractions and something that I need to focus on. Uh, oh, do you want to go, Cassandra? <laughs> <laughs> because I have not had a relationship during college, so I could not tell you, but um just as far as like time management goes, like just try and be really present. So like when you're with that person, like be with them. But when you're like trying to study, like study, like just try and keep it really like stay in the present where you are, what you're doing to that kind of thing. Um, but that's honestly all I have for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I could tell you about like what some friends do, for example, like I have a friend uh, who's in that relationship and uh, like if we were studying or something and, and every day at like nine o'clock I think they have like a like a set time to like talk to each other so maybe that could work out with you know being present on what you're doing at the moment it's like no matter where they are when it hits nine o'clock they have to check in with with each other he'll be like okay I need like 30 minutes to go do this I'll be back um and it's a pretty good way, I feel like, because like they have each other present every day. They always know what's going on with the other person, but they're also free to do whatever they have to do, if that makes sense. So I guess just to add on, add to add on a little bit. I also don't have too much experience with that, but like friendship wise, um, making sure that you really like give yourself, give your time to like everything you want to give your time to and like making it meaningful and intentional and making sure like 
oftentimes, you know, romantic relationships don't last forever and make sure that you're still staying present in the moment, like college, college, or like make a lot of fun out of those four years um, because they go by very fast. Like, I don't even know how it's our senior year already, but it is. Um, so just, be, you know, make sure that you're still having fun by yourself or with your friends and like still being with your partner and things like that. Just like a lot of things in life, it's all about communication and prioritization of time. And so you need to set the goals for yourself and uh, communicating with whatever relationships you have, friends, uh, loved ones, communicating the needs that you have. You know, you have a big exam the next day, maybe not the best time to go to a party or an event. And so you need to be able to prioritize and communicate those priorities um, in the right way. And it's always making time for others is planning it out, planning out when you're gonna study, planning out when you're going to do activities um, and making sure that you prioritize correctly in terms of what you have going on that day, that week, coming up, birthdays. Um, so everything goes by very fast and you'll be surprised on how quickly you start the semester and you're on holiday break to entering your junior year and just yesterday it felt like you were a freshman. Um, so time, time, time goes by very quickly. So but speaking of time today, we've been able to go over a lot in a minimum amount of time um, in terms of our hacks for success at NSU. Um, this has been a great uh, workshop um, led by Tutoring and Testing Center and the Office of Student Success and wouldn't have been possible without our amazing panelists. So round of applause for our panelists for sharing their insights and anecdotes and stories. And so um, I know that this has been very helpful in terms of being able to answer questions and worries that incoming students have. But I think these are worries, even if you weren't a freshman, that are going through your mind, whether from res life to relationships, to study habits, to just things that are going on in our everyday life. Because at the end of the day, we're individuals and we're all facing different challenges and we all have different needs and ways that we learn and take in information. And so all of these tips can work and be digested in different ways that work for you. Um, before we kind of wrap it up, uh, Courtney, Melissa, our panelists, or our audience, is there any additional questions or feedback that you have? I just wanted to say, like, um, congrats to all of you, all you freshmen, like, coming to college and making that decision to really start your education um, and, like, really ask for help. Like, there's so many great resources, seriously. Like, I'm not even kidding. Um, and there's, like, a lot of great people here to help you. And it's not, like, there's no stupid questions and we're really awesome for being here. Just remember that, remember your why and like why you started and things like that. Like I always tell that to people. So that's just my little advice. Um, I have like closing remarks and also a very random like tip, but um, yeah, first I would say in, in conclusion, you know, learn how, things work for you, but also um, ask for help when you need to and use the resources available to you. You know, it has been mentioned, go to office hours. Sometimes they're scared to like go to a professor's office, but most of the time they're even nicer than they're in class in office hours and they'll be like willing to help. Um, if you have an SI leader, um, definitely go to your SI sessions, pretty helpful. Uh, go to tutoring. We've all been there. We've all used the resources and it's very helpful. Um, and then lastly, the very random tip, um, freshman year, when I got my comforter for my bed, I accidentally got a queen sized comforter and it ended up being the best mistake ever because um, <laughs> remember when we were talking about like um, storage, it covered the entire like bottom half of the bed. So it covered all of the boxes. And then throughout the four years, I've had different sized beds. Like first you have, I think a twin XL. Sometimes you can have like a full, now I have a queen and I've like moved on with my queen size comforter throughout the four years. So <laughs> if you can get a queen size comforter, that would be my random tip. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I just want to say congrats to you guys as well. Like super exciting starting. I remember I was really excited as a freshman. I also have a really random tip, but <laughs> it's fine. So you get a shark card for campus on campus. 
you will be pulling that thing out all the time like because you use it for the dine, it's your dining card and you use it to get into the library and things like that. So I recommend like one of these like pocket holders um, or I have a new phone case that it like slides so you can like pull it out because it's just, I find it a lot easier, but yeah, that's my random tip. <laughs> That's a good tip. My tip is also don't lose your shark card because it costs $25 to get a new one. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. I lost money. <laughs> I have to go get it replaced. Um, my tip is the tips don't stop here, right? So you guys have seen all of our faces and, you know, Courtney and I and Emilio, we're all on campus. You know, we do, we all practice an open door policy for students. So like if you just see us and we're in line at Starbucks, say hi to us. You know, like we love getting to know students. We love it when students drop by. So, you know, we are like your academic and just your NSU support team. So just make as much use of us and your professors, your advisors as much as possible. Um, my, my tip, uh, my last tip to leave you is believe in yourself. Uh, college can be very stressful. Life can be stressful. And sometimes you feel like life doesn't play by the rules and it hits you pretty hard. And, that's okay. You learn. Your college, you're going to go through a lot of different experiences. And again, you're not going to be defined or judged by your failures. Um, it's going to be how you respond to them, how you pick yourself up. And so you'll never be defined by that one assignment or class or relationship that didn't go right. There's a whole lot of road to go after that. And so there's a lot of here people here that support you, a lot of friends, family, and just don't get yourself down when life kind of hits you that way, because there's a lot of things that you could do to kind of bounce back and have a great college journey. And part of the journey are those experiences. You end up learning a lot from those moments, those moments of anxiety, those moments of procrastination. Um, but there's going to be a lot of great moments that come from recovering from those type of things and just believe in yourself and take care of yourself and advocate for yourself. Do you guys believe that you could drop your um, email just in case like anyone in this chat, including me, have questions? Absolutely. Please. Yeah, and I also put... Um, the tutoring and testing center, we have two different um, Instagram accounts. So I put um, both of our Instagram accounts there as well. So we do different like things throughout the semester. Like I think Cassandra briefly mentioned Sharkapalooza. The first two weeks of school are weeks of welcome. There was tons of fun activities. You can get so much free food and a million free t-shirts um those first two weeks of school so when you get here look for the weeks of welcome calendar we will hopefully be having a tutoring and testing center event so hopefully we'll see you guys there i can't say what it is because it's not approved yet but hopefully <laughs> we'll be doing something fun with music so <laughs> yeah and that's also that's also like another tip follow different departments on instagram because I remember we saw a post on Instagram that there were gonna be salty donuts in the UC spine and we didn't see that anywhere else. And like we hot tailed it over there to make sure we got some decadent donuts because we're a department that loves donuts. So um, that's, you know, there's a lot of giveaways. You could like, there was a time where you could like build a stuffed animal like shark and it was first come first serve. And Ooh. sometimes you don't see it. Yes, Courtney has it. Oh. Um, yeah, that was free, you know, and sometimes you'll see it come through my your best email. Friend. Sometimes you don't check your email, you know, all the time, but you are on Instagram. So you will see these things happening and you can get there in time to get the free stuff. So that's a good tip. Yeah. Great way to wrap up this amazing workshop. Thank you for our panelists. Um, great collaboration to new testing and to success. Many more to come. And for the freshmen uh, here and all students in attendance here, thanks for investing in yourself, joining us today. Uh, we are gonna have this recording uh, um, available to you. I know Tutoring Testing has a great YouTube channel. They're gonna post it in and I'm gonna have a way to share with our student success scholars, but thank you again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you this fall. Bye everyone. Thanks everybody, fins up. Bye. <laughs> uh -huh. Can you give me a print out of like,